VQ35DE with all factory employees installed, and there's quite a few of them. But for the purpose of this video, we're only going to be focusing on three of them. The alternator, crank, and fan pulley. Now know what you're thinking. The VQ35 does not have a fan on it. Actually, it used to. When they switched to electric fans, for some reason Nissan decided it would be easier to add an all-new pulley instead of just running a short belt. Each one of these three pulleys has a problem with it, and in this video, we're going to fix them. As I just said, the fan pulley is worthless, so we're going to remove it and run a shorter belt. And the other two pulleys are heavy. The one on the alternator is unnecessarily heavy, and the one on the crank is extremely heavy. So we're going to replace both of those with aluminum pulleys. The alternator pulley isn't that important, so we can just get that from eBay. As I said, we're deleting the fan pulley, but make sure the crank pulley is name brand. That one's important. You want a good quality product there. Can't skimp, or you could end up hurting something a lot more expensive. If you really wanted to, you could change out the power steering pump pulley, but it's just not worth it. The only people that make it are on Orthodox Racing, and it's $150. So for the purpose of this video, we're going to focus on these three pulleys to get the most bang for our buck. I was able to find two different dyno graphs specifically on VQ35DEs showing the benefits of having lighter pulleys and an underdriven crank pulley. This first graph is from Super Street Magazine on a 350Z and the second graph is by Nonstop Tuning on a G35. Both tests support a slight gain across the entire rev range with peak numbers being about 5 horsepower higher and maximum gains of 10 horsepower in places. So I would say this is definitely a worthwhile mod. So if you're doing this job from scratch, what you want to do is jack the car up with the parking brake on. Have someone get in the car, put the car in gear if it's a manual and press their feet down on the brakes while you use a big breaker bar and a 19 millimeter socket on the main crank bolt it's going to be on there really tight so you're going to have to really pull on it but it shouldn't be that bad if you have an automatic car boy are you in for a world of hurt you're going to have to remove everything on the front of the car the radiator the ac condenser the front core support the front bumper everything because you're going to have to get an impact gun on that 19 millimeter socket. You might be able to get a pry bar in onto the flex plate and avoid doing all that and break it loose of a breaker bar, but I'm not sure if there's a window to the flex plate like there are on Ford and GM transmissions. A third pulley bolts on in three different places. A bolt up here, here, and here. All you have to do is just take those bolts out, remove the pulley and put them back in and run a shorter length belt. If you still have the power steering pump, it bolts right here as well, but it was sandwiched on top of that pulley's mount, so you'll need some sort of spacer here to take up the slack so the power steering pump isn't tilted inward and you mess up the mount. You can stack washers, you can cut off a piece of pipe, you can even order them off the internet if you feel like it. Once you have all your pulleys finally set up to figure out how much belt you need, you're going to have to run a piece of string around everything, pull it tight, mark it off, and then measure it with the measuring tape to find out the length. This is, I believe, a 29 inch belt. I couldn't find it in a six rib, so I have two three rib belts on here to take up all six lines. I could probably get away with just a three belt because it's only spinning the alternator. It doesn't really have to work that hard, but it adds a little bit of extra security knowing that if one of these belts tears up for whatever reason, I have a second one. Unfortunately, the only way to get the alternator pulley off is with an impact gun because otherwise it's just going to spin. If you try to stick a screwdriver in the alternator to hold the stator still, it's just going to damage it. You have to take the alternator off. Luckily, it's not that bad on these cars. If you did end up buying the power steering pump pulley, you're going to need a puller. So it's going to grab on with three little jaws and you're just going to turn in the set screw to pull off the pulley. You should be able to borrow one for free from an auto parts store and it'll take it right off. This top bolt here is a 14 millimeter bolt and the bottom bolt underneath this pulley is a 12 millimeter bolt and this main pulley itself is a 24 millimeter nut. You can see exactly what we're working with here. 
This is where the main cable to and from the alternator goes. Make sure you disconnect the battery before you try and take this off because if your wrench touches any part of a car, it will ground out. You might blow a fuse, might catch something on fire, or you might just shock yourself. Uh, you can see this one is a captured nut as well as this one right here. So don't gotta worry about anything on the back side. This just bolts right into that captured nut there. What we're gonna be taking off is this big nut right here. All it is is you just gotta hold this, hit it with the impact gun, and it should zip right off. And just like that, we got our nut is off and pulley. While I was working on this part of a car, I took the opportunity to replace this heavy steel lower alternator bracket with this much lighter aluminum alternator bracket I made. Just line the two holes up. You can see that this isn't perfectly flat. This is a little bit lower than the other side. So I've got this little spacer here. And it mounts right here on the bottom of the alternator. And it will end up down there by the transmission cooler lines down at the bottom. You can just feel the difference. It's amazing how light this aluminum pulley is compared to this stock pulley. So we're going to go ahead and install this on our alternator, throw our alternator back in the engine, and we will be done. You can see all the weight we're going to save from this set of mods. It comes up to almost 8 pounds, most of that being the underdriven crank pulley. If you added the power steering pulley, it would save you another half pound, but like I said, I just don't think that's worth it for 150 bucks. If you can only do one of these, I would definitely do the underdrive crank pulley. That's going to be your best bang for the buck. I've got the alternator put back in with our brand new pulley on and it fits perfectly. I didn't have any issues. You're not going to see too big of a gain from removing the third pulley and from changing out this alternator pulley. Your main gain is going to come from the underdrive lightweight crank pulley. That's where I would say probably 90 to 95% of your gains are going to come from. But obviously looking at my setup having no AC condenser, no extra tensioner, no extra tensioner, no power steering pump, lighter pulley, lighter pulley, deleted pulley. This hoop pulley setup is going to be a lot more efficient than the original seven pulley setup. But for most of you guys, I would recommend just these three. Most of you are gonna keep your power steering and your AC. But if you do these three pulleys for like 300 bucks, you're gonna get a very consistent 10 horsepower gain pretty much all the way across your rev range. Some people don't like these. They say that it causes your engine to blow up because you're losing the very slight dampening effect of the heavier pulley. But at this point, these cars, any rubber that was in that original crank pulley has hardened and is basically worthless now. So unless you're gonna go out and buy a brand new damper from Nissan for God knows how much money, or you're gonna get a fluid damper, this is your best option. I've had this crank pulley on the car for 35,000 miles, three years, and at least 15 to 20 track days on this motor with this pulley, and I've never once had a single issue out of it. So if it causes any sort of added wear and tear in the engine, it's not something that you're going to readily see. All of the people claiming that these blow up your engine seem to know a guy who knew a guy who once blew up his mom's motor. I can't find anyone who can directly point me to this pulley causing the failure on this engine. It's usually a hundred other things before you get to the pulley. Thanks for watching my video on VQ35DE pulleys and what to do with them. Please go check out some of my other content like my carbon fiber build and some track footage. Hit that subscribe button below and I will see you guys next week.